Hello, AP Calc AB students. We are here for the finale, the big finale. It's going to be over after this video. Well, at least volume by finding cross sections. We're still in topic 8.8. .8. We're dealing with cross sections that are made up of, particularly in this video, circles. We have two more that we have to talk about. And this is actually the third video in the series of videos over volumes by using cross sections. So we certainly uh, wish that you would check out the previous two if you haven't already, because this one will make a lot more sense otherwise. So even more cross sections, what are we talking about? Well, when you last left us, we had this mess going on and man, I just looked at this and this is kind of a crazy mess, isn't it? And we had found the um, volume by using cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis as squares. And the key thing that I wanna point out here, and I'll just use my highlighter, otherwise you probably never see this, but the distance from the top to the bottom, that would be this particular rectangle that I've just highlighted here in orange, is two times the square root of four minus x squared, because that's a very pivotal part of each one of these uh, particular problems. Now as we move to the problems that we're going to do in this video, parts D and E, we read and it says the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis and they're isosceles right triangles whose hypotenuse resides along the base. Now what does that mean? Well if we go up to our picture it's a basically saying to us that this particular length here is going to be the hypotenuse. That's what's in the base or residing along the base. And then these other two sides are just going to be equal to each other. So if I can pull that shape out and draw that hypotenuse that would be down here, and I just make it extra thick so you know that it was that representative rectangle, it is the particular uh, side that has that length of 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. And then I have an isosceles triangle, right? Definitely looks like one. I like it. I like it. And these two sides are the same. Now, we know the base. No argument there. But what we have to determine is this height. And that's where things get a little bit tricky. So we start that process off by understanding that that altitude is going to intersect the base and cut it in half. So we just have one square root of four minus x squared, right? And then we have to understand what kind of triangle we have. Well, if this is a right angle and it measures 90 degrees, that leaves 90 degrees for the other two angles combined. Well, if the two opposite sides are the same, then that 90 degrees is split down the middle, 45 and 45, and we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle over on this right side. And what we know is that the, the uh, hypotenuse, right? Uh, I'm, well, let's step back, step back. We know the two legs, that's where I wanna go with this, the two legs, which would be this piece and this piece of the little triangle, are going to be the same. And so therefore, the height, which is right there, is just square root of four minus x squared. So everything is all set. There's our height, there's our base. Let's put it all together. So we know that our area is one half times the base, times the height. And we're going to take this guy and we are going to integrate it. So to find our volume, we would normally integrate from negative 2 to 2. We're going to talk about that here again, right? Negative 2 is where we start here. Positive 2 is where we end for this circular shape, right? And so then we would see that we'd multiply all this together and things do tend to kind of cancel a little bit, right? The two and the half will cancel. We can multiply the two like square roots. The square root goes away. And then we miss our best friend, right? And I've really harped on that throughout this problem. And it's not something that you have to do. 
Maybe you don't like this. If you don't like it, don't do it. But by using zero as your lower boundary and moving on to two and doubling it because you're talking about just finding the right side volume, you're going to save yourself a lot of pain and anguish. So let's integrate. 4 becomes 4x. x squared becomes x cubed over 3. We use our boundaries 2 to 0, and everything should come out really nice. 2 out in front. We multiply, or we replace, I should say, our x with 2. And then we get this very familiar expression, 8 minus 8 thirds. It seems like we've been getting that a lot. And now we have 2 times what would be 16 thirds, which is 32 thirds. Now, if you're wondering, what is the relationship between the isosceles right triangle, whose hypotenuse resides along the base, and our original square cross section? Well, it looks as if you just took this 128 over 3, and how does it become a 32 over 3? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's just 1 fourth of the square. That's what we're going to get right there. And I'm going to talk about these shortcuts. These shortcuts are really starting to pile up on us. So far, I'm going to highlight these in this obnoxious magenta color, but these highlighted constants seem to play a really big role. And boy, it's hard to find some of these constants. There's that pi over 8 that I wanted for part B. So we're going to revisit those here in just a little bit. Now, Let's take a look at our final piece. Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are isosceles right triangles with now a leg residing along the base. Now, what that means, this one's a little bit tougher to kind of envision, but what that means is you've got your leg right here, and then if you can picture coming straight at you, straight towards us, straight in our face, another leg that's exactly the same side, right? So you have something like this, where this bottom piece would be in the flat circular part of that uh, shaded region. And then coming up towards you, right, is another leg. And then we connect those two using a hypotenuse. So what we've got is this picture. Here's our wonderful purple rectangle again. And we have another leg coming up straight that way. Remember, this is the base. That is the 2 square root of 4 minus x squared. Well, obviously, these are going to be the same size. No argument there. Yep, we have some hypotenuse. Who knows what that is? And who cares what that is? Because the area formula of this triangle is just 1 half times the product of the base and the height. So that's not too slouchy. Seems pretty easy to get our heads wrapped around that. Well, stay tuned because it's going to get better. So what's going to happen now is when we find the volume, we multiply all this together and we find out that 1 half times 2 is, of course, 1. There's still a 2 hanging around. And then the two square roots multiply together to get 4 minus x squared, as we would typically expect. And then we finish it up by using our boundaries negative 2 to 2. But I miss my friend 0. So after I put my little differential dx here, I am going to say, why not? Let's put it over here. Why not start at 2 again? And then we can just cut this distance in half because of the symmetry. And we have this as our setup, and it's going to make things a little bit easier, of course. And we're happy about that. Bring these twos together. Hey, two. Hi, two. How you doing? We're now a four. And if I uh, then realize that I don't want a square root, I'm getting a little getting a little carried away here. It's getting late. That shouldn't be there. And if I integrate 4 minus x squared, we're going to get 4x minus x cubed over 3. And the boundaries are going to go 2 to 0. And there's nothing left to do but plug in. And I think by the time you get to this problem, after I've seen all the other ones working through them, you're getting this same 8 minus 8 thirds time and time again. And of course, that answer is going to be 4 times 
16 thirds, which of course we know is going to be 64 thirds. And that's our answer. But I ask once again, what is the effect on the original 128 thirds that you get for the square that creates the 64 thirds? And it might be pretty obvious to you that you are multiplying it by one half. That is the effect. And this guy deserves to be circled in this magenta color. So if we look at our shapes, it like seems to equate semicircles is pi over 8 times the square volume, equilateral, radical 3 over 4, isosceles right, hypotenuse in the base, 1 over 4, isosceles right, with a leg in the base, 1 over 2. What does all that mean? Well, it may mean nothing. In other words, you don't have to memorize those things. You can see that we can still work through the problem. We can develop the formula, maybe draw the pictures, especially in the cases of the triangles, and come up with the volumes that we need. However, on my final page here, I do have a chart that can be very helpful in determining a fast approach. Now, one thing about this chart is that it assumes that all cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis and the length from the top to the uh, bottom to form that base is represented as like f minus g of x in this case. And we're going to define that as x. In other words, x is like that length s that we used to say. All right. So uh, obviously the square is the one of the easier ones to work through. And we, we just integrate that, that length, which we called x squared from the top to the bottom. What I'm interested in is what happens with the semicircle as opposed to the um, original volume of square. And you can see it's just multiplied, yep, by pi over 8. Equilateral triangle, same volume, integration of x squared, but we multiply by rat, uh, root 3 over 4. We already talked about isosceles right triangle with a leg in the base is half. This was actually the part E that we just did. And then the isosceles triangle with a hypotenuse in the base, that was part D. And so they'll always work, and you can use them to create some shortcuts. But if it's a little bit overwhelming, you can just always build them from scratch. I will tell you on the AP exam, it's rare that students see this one. And it's uh, a little rare that students see this one. This one's a little bit more of a possibility as triangles go, and these are always strong possibilities as well. I hope this has really helped you a little bit with finding the volumes using cross-sections. They're not very difficult. They just take a little practice, and you seem to kind of find yourself getting into a rhythm. We're pretty much done with everything for AB Calculus. We have a little bit more discussion to talk about with some other kinds of volumes. And after that, we're ready to tackle that AP exam. Hope this helps. As always, if you like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button. Keep studying, you guys, and we'll see you next time.